Thank you very much once again, and I'm being reminded of the time. Um, as politicians, um, I'm not too sure we are time bound because politicians, where they man platforms, um, they speak and they, they continue talking until the people say that cheers on. So probably I have to try and stick to the time over here. <laughs> I must also commend the organizers. I've been, I was much convinced to attend this particular uh, forum, and I must say that for the past two days, I have learned a lot that I have to go back. So I agree with you that we change uh, the, the forum to urban therapy, not urban age, because a lot of uh, uh, information that I have received here will, uh, will really impact um, back home in Accra. I come from Accra. I'm the mayor of Accra, and I. Accra is a very beautiful place by its own standards. It has got its own issues. Um, I'd like to tell you more about Accra. In 1991, this is how a space of Accra looks like. It's just about 11 kilometers. Uh, by the year 2000, um, you had some peri-urban areas that sprang up to about 17 kilometers. And then to, by 2014, urban sprawl, and you have Accra, with about 20 kilometers from someone back to Accra and then back and forth. So the city has grown for the past 20 good years in terms of population and then in terms of uh, space as well. Um, the population of Accra uh, grows at, the, at around 5.5%, which is more than the national growth rate of about 3.1%. And the density of the population, which used to be in the 1991 jurisdictional area, has also spread. So the density has spread, and then we are confronted with the issues of um, um, uh, density in some other areas as well. Uh, the population of Accra is about 2.4 million um, during in the evening, um, but that's a resident population. Uh, using a 3.1% growth rate nation nationally, um, uh, 2010 population housing census. And then, uh, but during the day, there's an influx of about 2 million people also coming to the city. So you'll be talking for about 4.5 million people during the day in the city center. The, the city economy is structured formal and informal, and you have 26% formal and informal 74%. If you have a city which you are confronted with an informal economy of about 74%, then you have a challenge. And the challenge is where politicians always term that informal sector as a nuisance economy because there's a difficulty in collecting your rates, there's a difficulty in reaching out to people, and oftentimes because the formal sector is easy to assess, we much concentrate on that, and that leads us to to the big issue of inclusivity, how do we marry these two issues? Because if you have a city that has an informal sector of about 74%, it's extremely important as a, as a leader to pay attention to that sector. 56% uh, of Accra population is made up of young people. We have a very youthful population in Accra, and I could see that 71% um, of that is economically active. We, I want to show you some slides about the, the, the socioeconomic classification of Accra. And it tells you where the people are living at. So Accra Central, which is a central business district where my office is, is that's what uh, the yellow column represents it. And then you have the first class residential area when you come into Accra, the airport area, Cantonment, East Legon, these are the first class residential neighborhood. And then you have Old Accra, which is along the beach. And in Old Accra, it became old simply because by 1965, when we had a harbor there, it was moved to another town, which is Tema, so it turned to be Old Accra. Once the, the mainstay of the economy, which is the harbor, was moved out, that led to the economic downtown of the Old Accra. And then you have Sukura, some informal settlements. And let me also share with you that um, in Accra, every community that you find, which is high class, there's an adjoining informal settlement. And the connection of the informal settlement to the, to the high class residential area is that they feed into it. The high class residential area also needs people from the informal settlements for menial jobs to supply them with a couple of things. So there's a connection between the formal and informal 
settlements as well in Accra. And then we have Old Fordaman. Old Fordaman is very popular. I'm sure those of you in, who have been very active in, in the urban, urban issues know about Old Fordaman, which is popularly called also at Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, it's the largest uh, informal settlement that you have with over 100,000 people, but we don't call it Old Fordaman. Uh, and then we have the Kole Lagoon, which is the, the only main um, um, water body that cuts across the city center and enters into the sea. These are the two sides of Accra. It's a sharp contrast of um, a beautiful place and then a truck pusher. But they all live in the city. How do, you, how do they interfere so that we will ensure inclusivity? that the people for, who are living in the high-class residential areas will acknowledge the contribution of the people in the informal sector, and also the people in the informal sector will also recognize that they have an aspiration to live a better life as well. This is what brings us to the challenge in Accra. And now we have the building blocks, for me, on the building a social capital on the inclusivity. I just want to share with you an experience about Accra, who we are, and Accra talking about inclusivity, where we live, what work we do, as well as um, talking about uh, our means of recreation, our level of social and economic security, our level of community engagement, and also how we perceive others in Accra. Who we are as a people. First of all, I want to emphasize on the fact that as a people, we we'll appreciate education so much. Because of time, and I just want to cite an example on each of the, each of the social capital ends the blocks that I have mentioned. Education is compulsory at the basic level from kindergarten, and it is, it is also for free. But what is the contribution, and that's for the state, but what is the contribution of local government authority? The local government authority also support by making sure that we provide more of the, of the infrastructure and then as well as um, many other things. Where we live, we live in a very beautiful city. We try as much as possible to do a lot of landscaping and also to provide, you know, toilets to household, especially in the informal settlements. Because Accra was ranked as the seventh dirtiest city in 2014, and for that matter, and it is because of lack of toilet facilities. And we, as much as possible, government is subsidizing the provision of toilet facilities by 70 percent. What we do as people. Well, we support also the informal sector, which is predominantly the, the, the mainstay of the economy in Accra. You could see that we have a lot of markets in Accra, and the commerce in Accra, which is the market in Accra, basically we have all the big markets in Accra, and everybody in the country comes to Accra Central to do business one way or the other. It's a retail market and as well as bulk breaking. So everybody comes to Accra to come and do one business or the other. Our means of recreation, sports is one major event that we could use to turn around informal settlement. All our big players, all our big stars in boxing, all of them come from the informal settlement. So promotion of sports in informal settlement is one way of promoting inclusivity. And this one is, is a stadium that we put up and we are, we are using it so much now in Accra. Look, level of social and economic security. We try as much as possible to make sure that um, uh, people who are vulnerable are also part of the society. And 5% of the Assembly's Common Fund, we have a common fund. And, and we make sure that 5% of it is dedicated to, to support um, people who are disabled. On Monday, we are providing a lot of things for people who are disabled. Uh, they choose what they want to do, and then we provide them with the means as well. Level of security and many other things that we tried to do. Level of community engagement as part of our responsibility as a city, we engage because it's, a, it's mandatory that as part of your policy formulation, your budget preparation, you will engage a wide range of stakeholders, including informal settlement. So you have to engage, it's, it's a law. And we do a lot of cultural events as well to promote arts and culture, which is primarily the responsible, uh, what uh, the informal settlement also uh, do most of the times in the city center. 
I've spoken a lot also about public engagements, and I will continue to. Uh, urban mobility is also very critical. 53% uh, of the people in Accra, you know, move by foot, and we have to ensure that pedestrianization is key. 70% of the people that involved in casualties, road crashes, are pedestrians. And it is very important that we ensure pedestrian safety. And for that matter, pedestrianization is encouraged in Accra so that uh, people can, be, can, be, can move about so freely and so easily. I would like to end by making some few recommendations. One is that um, I think that our research that we do should be very systemic. It should, it, should be, it should cut across. I've heard a lot of speakers who are talking, but the city is it's, it's where we live, and everybody is very active and plays part in the city. So when we are conducting our research, it should be very systemic. And then as well, setting up better systems. It is very unfortunate that in our part of the world, and especially in Accra, data is missing especially at the city level. We have you know, macro data, but we don't have micro data. So at city managers, how do you take decision? You know, your decision has to be driven by data, and it's very important that we look at the data. And five months ago, I have set up a data center that is also helping us in making sure that we do some of this. Reducing the size and effect of the underground economy. Oftentimes, because of the informal sector, 74%, they, are, they can't be seen. Many of them cannot be seen and how to reduce the size and effect of the informal economy so that a city authority will be able to tap into some of these resources. Government is introducing tax identification net, uh, system, which everybody, if you want to do business, you have to get a TIN number. Government is also introducing what we call a national identification. We have different IDs, either driver's license or whatever, we want to make sure that we, we have a national identification which everybody can be can, can, can hold on to so that, so these are, and then we have introduced the digital addressing system that everywhere you are, you will be able to generate an address which is about 5.5 meters, square meters. So you will be able to generate address which is very unique and will be able to trace them. So these are ways that we are using to be able to reduce the effect of the underground economy. And finally, we need to also ensure that the coverage and connectivity of economic and social service, uh, such as reduction in accidents and number of people established jobs through the assemblies fund to vulnerable groups. These are some of the ways that we believe that if we are able to take those steps, we will ensure inclusivity in, in our system. Thank you very much.